Simon Scarrow's Macro and Cato series of Roman war novels. Hi, I'm Gary Lovisi, and this time we're going to look at a group of books. People always ask me, what do you read? What do you read? What do you read? A lot of stuff, hard-boiled crime, science fiction, but also uh, historical adventure fiction, where there's a, a character that runs through history uh, and uh, battles and wars, uh, kind of like um, C.S. Forrester's Hornblower series, or uh, uh, Bernard Cornwell's Richard Sharp series, uh, and others. I'm really not a big fan of the uh, Roman, um, ancient Roman series that are, um, have been written by different writers over the years, because a lot of them have to do with it's just gladiator stuff or Spartacus and stuff like that. But there's a lot of new series or recent series that have come about that have to do with the Roman military, and how the army was run, how it was set up, how they fought battles. It deals with the strategies and the tactics that were used. And uh, one of the best series uh, going is the Macro and Cato series by Simon Scarrow. Scarrow is a British author. He lives in Norfolk in, uh, in, in England. And uh, he's written so far 18 books in, the, in this series since uh, 2000, uh, usually one a year. And uh, they're great, great stuff. Uh, what it does is he takes a hard-bitten, tough guy uh, centurion named uh, Macro. I'm not going to go into all their names and everything, but Macro is a tough, um, crude, but effective uh, military centurion, uh, a guy who's going to be in the army all his life, and he's um, he's tasked with the uh, he's tasked with the task of um, having to uh, deal with uh, uh, a, a younger uh, soldier who's been kind of forced into the military, into the Roman Legion, Second Legion in uh, in Germany. It starts out and they go to Britain. Uh, by uh, by the emperor, uh, he, he uh, Cato was a uh, was the son of one of the freedmen in the emperor's palace, and the emperor gave him a chance to go into the legions as a junior officer in Octio. And uh, there's a lot of resentment because uh, he's a uh, uh, a youthful uh, fellow who doesn't really know much about the, uh, the military at all. He's a, uh, a kind of a bookworm. He's a bookish person, and um, He's uh, taught by, by Macro uh, what, what the army means and what army life is like. And it really brings, to, brings forward a lot of great, a lot of great, uh, um, great uh, information about uh, what it was like to be in the Roman legions at that time, um, how they fought, um, the strategy and tactics, the battles that they won, and the peoples that they fought and um, really puts a lot of things into perspective. It's really, really good stuff, and it's really excellent action and adventure. Some of the battles are just, uh, just uh, terrific. These are books that you can't put down. Um, in the beginning, when the first book came out, that was, uh, here's, here's, the, here's the books. Here's all, uh, well, it's 18 of them. Uh, missing one, The Gladiator, which I could not find. I don't know why, but there's always, you know, something that comes up where you can't find a book, but uh, I have it somewhere. Uh, and the first book in this series is Under the Eagle. This came out in 2000. And um, all of these books, the early books in the series, the first five or six, are pretty scarce. They're um, fairly pricey now, in nice condition, because uh, the series has run so long. It's gone over, uh, it's gone 20 years now. And um, people want to uh, have first editions of the, of the uh, original first British uh, hardcovers, and these are from headline books, uh, British edition hardcovers, which are the f true first editions, and they're kind of scarce, especially the earlier ones, but even some of the later ones are, are scarce. So without further ado, I'm just going to show you some of the books and maybe talk a little bit about them. These are pretty heavy hardcovers, they're substantial books, and I'm just going to go through them first book is Under the Eagle, and this is where Macro and Cato uh, meet. Uh, they meet in the uh, forests of Germania that takes place 
in uh, 42 AD. Claudius is the emperor at the time, and um, it continues through the reign of Claudius. Um, the next book is uh, The Eagle's Conquest, book number two, and this takes place a couple of years, uh, a year or so later, when the uh, Roman army goes into Britain to conquer Britain. And um, uh, under Claudius, they, uh, they, they conquer Britain. And uh, the, next, the next, two, next two books in the series, three and four, When the Eagle Hunts, and then The Eagle and the Wolves, which is, uh, takes place also in 44 AD. So these are the, basically these three. You have Germany, and then you have three, in, um, three um, novels that take place in the conquest of Britain. And all throughout these books, Cato is learning to be a, uh, a junior officer under Macro's tutelage. Uh, Macro's a hard-bitten, tough guy. Uh, he uh, does not... Uh, does not uh, suffer fools greatly, and he sees Cato kind of as being a fool, and he's resentful of that, that he had a, a powerful friend that, that was able to give him this position in the Legion, where he had to fight his way up to become a centurion. Uh, he's a tough fighter. Uh, he's a no-nonsense, uh, not a very merciful guy. But on the other hand, he sees something in Cato that's that's maybe special, that's, that's unique. And he decides that instead of, um, like a lot of the other centurions who resent him, uh, preying upon him and making things difficult for him, he's going to try and help him along. And the two of them become kind of friends, even though they're totally opposite uh, types, of, uh, types of people. And, uh, you know, one, one who is a dedicated soldier who's, who's, who's willing to go in and fight like hell, and the other, who's a, a, a more a, actually a youth, who uh, is growing up in the legion and wondering what all that means and what it means to be a Roman, what it means to be uh, in the legion and a soldier and everything, and and then fighting these these uh, barbarian so-called people, so-called barbarian people that they're that they're fighting in uh, throughout the world, throughout the Roman Empire at that time, which is two thousand years ago. And uh, next book is um, again the fifth book, The Eagle's Prey, they're in Britain. The covers are kind of, um, the kind, kind of, uh, they have imagery is, uh, is not uh, pulp-like, it's, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's, in, it's interesting because it, it, it does give you a, a good flavor of the, uh, of the stories and, the, and time and place. Is it David Scott? Like Cornwell? It's, David Scott did covers for the Cornwell books. These, this is not it's very David same Scott. Style. Like, yeah, this is a. Uh, well, Larry Rostant did, um, I think, most of the uh, most of the cover illustrations. The next book, the sixth book, is the Eagle's Prophecy, where they're fighting pirates uh, on the high seas. It's, there's uh, pirates in uh, in Sicily that um, that are. Uh, endangering the Roman Empire and uh, they have to take uh, take a, uh, the legion on, on the on the ship on ships to fight the pirates and and this is like this is incredible this is like sea battles if you've seen uh, the movie Ben-Hur and, and you recall this the sea battle where um, Charlton Heston was playing Ben-Hur and he was on the ship and he saves the Roman general and you see that sea battle in the in, in action uh, on the on the silver screen, this is like what this uh, the eagle's prophecy is is, is very much like. It's, uh, it's unbelievable battles, and the thing is that the battles are shown, whether they're on the sea or land, uh, as accurately as they would be uh, in in those days. They show the the weapons, the tactics, the uh, strategy, um, all the all the kinds of ways that they would uh, use. You know, like if you if you call if you like the, the movie Gladiator with uh, Russell Crowe, um, to me, that movie is, is, a, is a great movie, but it's like two movies because uh, uh, the, m most of the movie has to do with him being, uh, the general has been uh, a, a gladiator 
and he's fighting and against Commodus and all of that. But if you look at the first 15 or 20 minutes of the movie, when they're fighting the Germans, uh, fighting the barbarians, so-called, in Germania to extend the empire for uh, Marcus Aurelius, the emperor, okay, that is what the Macro and Cato books are like. It's like a whole, you know, it's like that whole movie would have went like that. Uh, and that is based on The Eagle in the Snow by Wallace Bream. Wallace Bream was a, uh, a, a writer who wrote three books about, uh, uh, three books and two of them were about Roman history and one of them was magnificent and that was the basis for the book. Um, that was the basis for the book, uh, Gladiator. The, uh, the movie, Gladiator. movie Gladiator. And um, so that's what these books are like. That relentless non-stop battle, uh, f uh, all of the tactics, the weaponry, the ballistas, the catapults, everything that goes into uh, siege uh, warfare against, uh, in a city. But it's interesting and it's exciting because there's a great story there uh, about uh, not only these two, um, Macro and Cato, but all the intricacies of the politics uh, and the uh, uh, ruminations of, uh, that go on in a war and in a military camp. Uh, that have to do with with all of that. So there's so much going on, and um, the thing is that, uh, and Simon Scarrow is, uh, is has acknowledged this. He's he's stated that uh, he um, was is a lover of uh, of history and especially uh, ancient Roman history, um, and he has uh, uh, taught uh, uh, some uh, his, uh, Roman history. Uh, in in England, but also he um, he was a uh, fan of uh, of um, Mary Sutcliffe's um, three books that uh, she wrote, uh, the Eagle, which was made into a movie, and uh, the and two other two other books that uh, she wrote were in the fifties that were uh, written for juveniles about the the Roman army and the Roman Empire. Those are very popular at the time, and they're still excellent books. I I read them uh, a couple of years ago and uh, they're terrific, and you can see where he gets his inspiration from, but he improves upon them, you know, so much, so it's, it's, a, it's a great, it's a great series. And uh, seventh book in the series is The Eagle in the Sand, and this is, uh, again, changes the, uh, the locale to uh, the eastern part of the empire, Asia, where uh, they're fighting against the uh, Parthians. Parthians were uh, Another, a, a competitive empire in the east, basically it was Persia, uh, and the Parthians uh, were uh, forever a thorn in the side of the Romans, and the Romans uh, continued to try to, try to defeat them, uh, and they'd sent armies out to invade Parthia, uh, the land between the Tigris and the Euphrates River, which is basically Persia, but also uh, Iraq, so it's Iraq and Iran and that, that whole area there and the lands that they controlled. So they were a mighty empire and they were uh, fighting the Romans and this takes place in one of the kingdoms that was a buffer zone between the two empires. There's a lot of political intrigue, backstabbing and fights and all kinds of uh, incredible, incredible spying and things that are going on. Uh, the next book is Centurion and uh, this one, this is one of the ones I have that happens to be signed by Simon Scarra. You can see his signature on there. It's really nice to have these signed. These are beautiful, beautiful books. Here's the list of the, of the books in the series at that time. And um, that's the eighth book in the series. Now, as I, as I mentioned, the ninth book, Gladiator, I don't know where... I don't know where it is. I was looking for it all over the place. Um, but uh, so I don't have, I don't know where that is. That's that takes place on Crete with Ajax, who is a uh, the son of one of the pirates that they fought in uh, the, one of the previous books a couple of years earlier, who becomes a, a gladiator and um, fights takes over actually Crete, the island of Crete massacres all the Romans and uh, Macro and Cato are sent out there to try and put things straight and uh, 
there's a lot of, uh, again, uh, double dealing and betrayal and uh, warfare going on. And it uh, makes for an interesting, fascinating book. The next one is The Legion, where they're tracking down, they've defeated Ajax in Crete, and they're tracking him down. He's gone to, he's gone to Egypt. Egypt was the, was the, at the time, Egypt and Sicily, actually, were the breadbaskets of the Roman Empire. Um, Rome was a, was a city with over a million people in it. It was an it was a incredible uh, metropolis uh, that was uh, needed constant uh, food brought in to um, to feed the people uh, and to stop them from rioting. And you know, you heard the thing about bread and circuses. Well, they they had the circuses, but they also needed the bread, and the, the bread came from Egypt and Sicily. And in the Legion. Uh, Macro and Cato was sent to Egypt to uh, to uh, to capture Ajax and fight him and to uh, uh, keep the uh, the food flowing from Egypt to uh, the rest of the empire to Italia and especially to Rome. So there's a lot of uh, intrigue going on. These these are just great stories, great books. Uh, let me just move these up a little bit and we can get to the next ones. I don't know why I couldn't find Gladiator, but uh, there's always there's always something that comes up, you know. The next one is Praetorian, and this is from 2011. All of these are the original first edition hardcovers by Headline Books in the UK. That's Praetorian, and they become uh, they they're called to Rome to. Uh, do some work for uh, Claudius. Actually, they Claudius has a uh, freeman secretary who really runs everything for him, called Narcissus. And Narcissus is a wily rogue, a scoundrel, a plotter, and uh, he uses. He finds that Macro and Cato are, are, are very good military uh, guys, and there he finds that he can use them in, in his service and in the service of the emperor, which are not are always the same thing. And um, um, so he's this is they're they're in the Praetorian Guard now, and they're uh, at, stationed in Rome, and uh, there's all kinds of uh, intrigue and problems going on there. But that the, the, the end of the book they 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 sour on Narcissus. They realize that he's a he's the du duplicitous fiend. They hate him and they want to get the hell out of Rome and get to a place where they can actually get back to the Legion, where they can do proper fighting like, uh, like real soldiers and not like politicians. So the uh, Narcissus gives them their wish, which is, uh, which is, uh, he sends them back to Britannia. And um, it's, uh, all of these books take place in a certain time Usually there's a certain date. Um, the, the Blood Crows and the next one in the series is Brothers in Blood. Both take place in Britannia. Back in, they're back in Britannia after about five or six years. Uh, now uh, Cato is, uh, is a centurion and uh, He's, he's, uh, he'll soon become a, a, uh, a commander in his own right and a tribune. Um, these, these, these two are very scarce books, first of all. For some reason, they're very, very hard to find. And uh, they, they command uh, a, a pretty good price, like the first five or six books in the series. Not as high as Gladiator. Gladiator I can't find, <laughs> yeah. I have it right here somewhere, but uh, for the hell of me, I can't find it. I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, so these these are two great books taking place in Britain, uh, and a lot has changed at this point from the earlier books when they were in Britain. Uh, this is a time after Boudicca's rebellion. Um, there's uh, the, the Blood Crows are uh, are terrorizing. The, uh, the country and the blood crows in some ways are aligned to the Romans and the Romans, you know, Macro and Cato can't stand them. 
there's a lot of conflict, a lot of double dealing and betrayal. And the next one, and that by now he's, uh, by now um, the books have been numbered on the spine. This is book number 14, and the, it's, uh, the books have been called the Eagles of the Empire series. Um, and uh, this is number, this is number 14. This is again signed by Simon Scarra. So it's the Eagle of the Empire series, or the Roman Empire series, and you have the part where he's in, where they're in, uh, where they're in Britannia, the Britannia campaign, Eastern provinces, the Mediterranean, uh, again in Britannia. So there, and then there's other books that Simon Scarrow has written also, but I'm not going to go into those right now. But uh, so there's a, and, and the dates where the books, when the books take place. So he's, but they're back in Britannia, and it's the Eagles of the Empire series. And um, the next book, number 15, is Invictus, and this takes place in Hispania, or Spain, which, is, uh, which was an occupied uh, country, but was pretty much unconquered. There were, uh, there were areas in uh, northern, northern Spain, uh, I guess that correspond roughly with the Basque country, that were, uh, that were uh, under the Roman Empire rule at certain times, but uh, basically uh, were sometimes independent and fought against Rome, and Rome had to keep sending uh, legions in there to kind of reconquer that part of Hispania. Um, with their success in Hispania, they're called back to Rome to uh, to uh, get a, get a, a military uh, uh, like a reward for uh, for their for their uh, action in Hispania, um, defeating the enemies of Rome. And the next book is number sixteen, Day of the Caesars. So they're brought back to Rome. They're honored by Claudius, who is in uh, very bad health, and it turns out that uh, Claudius, while they're in Rome, uh, he passes away, and the new emperor is, nobody really knows who's going to be emperor. There's uh, two of his, uh, I don't know if they're sons, but two of the members of the royal family. One is Germanicus, who's a young boy of uh, about 12 or so, and he's the favorite of the military and the and legions, and uh, his father was a great hero. And the other one is a guy called Nero, who's about 16 years old, and uh, has the backing of the um, of the establishment and the uh, uh, the the bureaucracy that ru really runs the Roman Empire. So there's, and this is a tough book because it's like. Uh, the people that are behind Germanicus who want to bring back the Republic and then the people who are behind Nero who want to just take over and kill everybody and take everything. And the, our heroes, Macro and Cato, are, are stuck in the middle kind of because they, uh, they kind of don't know which side to fall on. They're, they're, they, 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 they like Germanicus but they don't think he's got what it takes. They don't like really Nero. He's, he's, they see a cruelness in him that has yet to really blossom, and it will blossom. <laughs> and um, they're, tuck, they're stuck in a tough place. So um, with that in mind, there's the last two books in the series, um, which um, I'm still reading, The Blood of Rome, and that's number... 17. I only have it in a trade paperback, but this is what the hardcover art would look like. I'm still reading it. And the reason why, see, I'm about three quarters done. And you know why? I've been reading this for a long time. I've read other books before coming back to this. And the reason why is because it's so damn good that I don't want to finish it. And uh, I just have it there so I can, I know I've got another. 25% of that book left to read and that really makes me happy because these books are so damn good. If you like historical fiction, 
of any type. Uh, and if you like military fiction, you're going to like these books a lot. If you're in the military, you're going to like these because you'll get an understanding of what uh, it was like back then. And you'll see a lot of things that uh, you can relate to. If you're a cop, you'll, you'll, you'll like this, these books. If you're a history major or any, you'll like these books. Uh, if you like politics, you'll like these books. Uh, and the last book is Traitors to Rome. And this is set in 56 AD. And in these two books, what happens is Macro and Cato have come to some kind of weird situation where they have dealt, have been able to uh, stay out of the clutches of Nero. Nero has killed his, his brother, Germanicus, and um, taken over and become emperor of Rome. He's becoming more and more unstable, dangerous, bloody, and crazy. And But Macro and Cato, being the military heroes that they are, he values them to a certain extent, but they just want to get the hell out of town because it's like Rome is getting crazy now with Nero. Uh, they're thinking like he might even burn the whole damn place down, which he does. Uh, he's going to start feeding Christians to the lions and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But Macro and Cato just want to get back to the army where they, they can see like a little, some reality, some common sense, some rationality. You know, things are are above board so they, they they get back to the army and in the blood of Rome and the traitors of Rome basically what they do is they're, they're um, sent uh, throughout the empire to Parthia and to other areas to fight the uh, the enemies of Rome who uh, who still supported uh, Germanicus and Narcissus. Narcissus has kidnapped uh, Cato's son and there's a whole lot of uh, uh, skullduggery that has uh, uh, occurred with, with Cato's wife, uh, who, was, uh, who he loved dearly and who was killed. And they were not sure whether she was a traitor or whether she was a hero. Uh, and his son is kidnapped and he's, he's going crazy trying to, to, uh, to, um, to, to save his son and at the same time uh, fighting the Parthians in the eastern part of the empire with uh, one of the uh, one uh, one a king that they're gonna that they want to they have to they're ordered to put on the throne of um, of um, one of the client states in the east who's crazy as he, he's he's brave and a great fighter but he's crazy as as hell and uh, total lunatic and so this. Um, this uh, this king, they have to deal with him, and uh, so I'm just about finished with uh, with the blood of Rome, and I still have, which I'm really happy to say, traitors of Rome to read, which I will read very soon. And uh, do you have to read these all in sequence, or if you picked up one, could you read it independently? Um, you can read them independently. But I would say read them in sequence. They're bad. I think the thing is that once you read one, you're going to want to read the next one. Wherever you start, uh, if you start at book number five or number 10 or number 15, you're going to want to read number six, 11, and, or, or seven, 16. You know? You're going to want to read the next one and then the next one after that. And then you're going to want to go back and read the beginning ones and you're going to read them all through. I've read these a couple of times. Um, uh, it's it, there. I, I cannot uh, emphasize how good these books are. Um, there's a few writers uh, of historical fiction that I think are really terrific. Um, one of them is C.S. Forrester with his Hornblower books. One of them is George MacDonald Fraser with his Flashman books. Uh, one of them is Bernard Cornwell with his Sharp books. All of those are outstanding uh, series that, that follow the the life in the military of a, of a, of a certain character, and uh, these fit right in with them. In fact, um, uh, Bernard Cornwell gave uh, th the first book that's in, in Simon Scarrow's series, The Eagle, uh, the Eagle's Conquest. Um, 
he gave the the cover blurb. I really don't need this kind of competition. <laughs> yeah, because he, he he even uh, recognizes how good the books are. And Cornwell, I did an interview with him, and I've done an interview with him in Paperback Parade uh, years ago. is is a masterful, terrific writer. Uh, his Richard Sharp books are unbelievably great, uh, and they're on video. Uh, from the BBC, by Sean, Sean Bean playing Sharp, uh, but the books are just are just wonderful, wonderful. So I may do something on on them in the future too. But I wanted to do something on Simon Scarrow because uh, this Roman uh, series is just is just terrific, and uh, I like these books. One of the books that I that I've written is this years ago, modern historical adventure novels, and this fits in. Uh, with that, uh, with that genre, um, and uh, in it, I, ha I list uh, show some of the some of the uh, Simon Scarrow books. A little bit, a little bit about about him and the value of the books. These are the early books. There's many that came out since this book came out. But I um, just wanted to uh, share these with you. This is something a little bit different from uh, usually the paperbacks and stuff, because I don't always read paperbacks, not all the time. I read, I like historical uh, nonfiction and historical fiction. So I read a lot of that also. And uh, some of that uh, applies to my own uh, Articles that I write for Paperback Parade and other magazines, and also for uh, for books that I write. I have my own Roman series um, that takes place uh, during the time of Augustus, uh, after he has conquered um, uh, um, um, Anthony and Cleopatra, and after after all of that, when 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 uh, he ruled Rome for like the next thirty years. Uh, it was a time of great stability and great success, but for it's never been it's never been looked at uh, by fiction writers before, because uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, crazy stuff that went on, but there was, but uh, it, it wasn't as dramatic as the part where you know Caesar was was assassinated and then Augustus and Mark Anthony fought the. Uh, um, fought the, uh, the murderers of Caesar, Cassius and Brutus and all of them, and then Cleopatra and that whole part of Roman history usually goes up to a certain point, like the TV show Rome, which uh, was on for two seasons, kind of took all that into, into uh, account and went up to the point where Augustus, um, Augustus was the last man standing basically, and then that stopped and it was like, okay, now everything's done. But nothing, not, it wasn't done. There was so much more that was going on and that would happen uh, under Augustus's reign. And how he uh, ran the empire, controlled the empire, and, and how he put people in, in place and what he did was, was fascinating. His, his tactics and strategy, his political acumen was, was masterful. He was the guy who set the pattern for all the Roman emperors that would follow. And he was the the great Roman emperor, and. Um, and what are those books called? Oh, well, uh, uh, the Sicilian. One of the, the first book, yeah, my book, uh, first book is the Sicilian. So, but um, anyway, um, Simon Scarrow is a uh, author that you should definitely, uh, definitely, definitely read. Uh, his, his Macro and Cato books are terrific, and his other books are also excellent. Um, that's where I probably have that gal the, the, the gladiator with the other. He, he wrote a series of books about uh, Wellington and uh, Napoleon, I think four books, and I probably with those. But um, anyway, I hope you like this uh, look at uh, the Simon Scarrow Macro and Cato books. Something a little different. We're looking at hardcovers, basically which uh, uh, cover art isn't uh, as dramatic and uh, good girl art and sexy as uh, the paperback cover art, 
but you know, sometimes the words on the page are more important than the art. I don't know, I guess you know, it might be. You Imagine know? that. Imagine that, you know? I mean, that's what it is when you're reading, reading books that uh, uh, the story and the characters and the words and the telling of the tale are truly brilliant. You can get just so lost in it. And uh, this is a series you can get lost in. These are books that you, you pick up this book and you read 10 or 20 pages. And you're just going to read the whole thing through to the end, and then you're going to want more. They're that, they're that good. Now, that said, there's some books, as far as I'm concerned in here, that are a little better than others. There's some that I prefer more than others. Uh, the ones in, that take place in Britain are uh, terrific. The one that takes place on the, uh, on the, uh, against the pirates of Rome with the sea battle is... Uh, Something different for Scarrow, because he takes uh, his 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 books are all um, in this series are all about the Roman Legion army fighting on land, and this one they, they talk about the uh, the ships and how they fought at sea, and it's very interesting and it's like really wild wild battles and stuff. Um, the uh, bat the stories where they're fighting in the uh, in the Eastern Empire is very interesting. Against the Parthians, there's, there's, you know, like the, w what they had to deal with, the, the polit politics and the, uh, um, uh, the different customs of different peoples and uh, how the Romans dealt with all of that uh, was very interesting. Uh, and, you know, uh, there was, you had uh, Roman, Romans uh, leaders, uh, legates of legions, or uh, generals of you know armies or commanders who would just basically just go in and either they kill everybody because that's what they wanted to do or they or they would work with the people and try to help them and uh, try to bring them into the empire as citizens so there was like all of this very strange kind of uh, very kind of a uh, individualistic way that uh, you know the Romans that were in positions of power would act. Some of them were bloodthirsty, you know, like the emperors. Some of them were really good and, um, for an emperor, uh, they were good and uh, intelligent and, and meant to do the right thing. And then others were just like, you know, Caligula or Nero, just bloody maniacs. So you had like all of this going on. Um, it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time in history, which, uh, you know, maybe some people might see some correlations to today. So. I just want to, again, just say, I hope you enjoyed this, this different kind of video. Look at the, the books of Simon Scarrow's Macro and Cato series. If you did, give us a thumbs up and a like, and uh, see you next time. Thank you.